Alright, David Harry here and in this video I'm going to show you the easiest way to connect your iPhone 15 to an external monitor or a TV. Now you're going to have to excuse this like cramped frame here and stuff might be a bit wonky. It's the best that I can do because the other way of filming is just even worse. Anyways, what I'm going to do is just show you how to set this up, which is super simple. And then what I will do is just give you a couple of examples of how it all looks on the screen. Now a couple of things to bear in mind here and that is I'm using a 15 Pro Max here so the Pro will do exactly the same now although the standard 15 and also the 15 plus don't have the same type of USB speeds on them they should also be compatible with using this type of cable that I'm using however I cannot confirm that although Apple did say in their presentation that all of the iPhones were 4k 60 compatible via HDMI so it should work on the other two as well and also this way of doing it definitely gives you a 4k 60 FPS output as well okay so what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you what what this cable is and essentially how it works which is super easy okay so the easiest way to connect an iPhone 15 to an external TV or monitor is to use a USB-C to HDMI cable which is what I've got here now the one thing that's really important to remember here is that these cables have to be DP alt mode 1.4 compatible now this particular cable that I'm using here by cable creation is definitely compatible so this one will without a shadow of a doubt works there are obviously other cables out there that will do this job but this one definitely works now as we can see here one end of the cable is USB-C and then the other end of the cable is HDMI now all we do is just to simply connect the USB-C end of the cable to the USB-C port on the iPhone 15 so as you can see we just pop that in there but what's really good about this particular cable is that on its USB-C end here it is thin enough to be able to attach to the iPhone's USB-C port even with the case on the iPhone and then we just take the HDMI end of the cable and connect that to a HDMI port on a TV or a monitor and then once everything is all connected up properly we will see a little blue icon here inside the dynamic island which I think is basically a blue USB-C cable icon now that's just an indicator to say that we do have a USB device attached and obviously in this instance that USB device is the USB-C to HDMI cable and then once everything is all connected up the picture from the iPhone 15 will automatically mirror straight to the connected TV or monitor so just to be clear you do not have to go into kind of any like special settings within the phone in order to switch this on it is fully automatic now because this is the simplest way of doing it obviously we are going to be using battery here however just before I end this video I will show a solution for like wireless charging and stuff which will help you to stop using up your battery when you're connected to a TV or a monitor anywho let me just show you some stuff here so as we can see immediately we've now got a mirror of the like you know the iPhone now if we change the orientation of the iPhone here nothing will change on the screen because that particular home screen is not meant to be viewed landscape so it's always going to be portrait like that however if I just go into a couple of things here let me show you some stuff so what I'm going to do oh yeah and another thing as well to mention here there is literally no perceivable latency between the actual phone and the screen so basically like no lag so if you want to do gaming which is what I do there's absolutely no lag at all or at least nothing that you would feel what it is between any HDMI output to an input there is going to be some form of lag or latency but usually that's like going to be less than a millisecond and that's basically the electronics that are actually like you know transferring the picture through and also maybe latency on the monitor itself but to all intents and purpose there is no latency or lag within this setup anywho let me go here where's me google folder right i'm gonna go onto youtube first of all so that's the youtube app there now as we can see that's all kind of like you know in the middle there like looking really small and stuff so what i'm gonna do let me just go to this video right, David Harry here. oh 
Sorry, one other thing I forgot to mention as well. The audio will automatically come out of the TV or the monitor as we will hear now. So what I'm gonna do is just play this for a little bit and we'll see the video playing in the screen there or on the screen. I'm going to show you this super awesome magnetic desktop stand for the iPad Pro. And it is super awesome as well. Now, the thing is, if I go full screen with that video, as we will see, the orientation on the iPhone screen changes there. However, if I play it on the screen, on the sorry, on the TV or the monitor. Full disclosure, I was sent this in exchange for a review. And although... Now, as we can see there, we've still got the letterboxing going on, but we've also got a slight pillar boxing on the side of the picture. So within the YouTube app, as a for instance, we are not going to get that full screen. Now, I do know that there are some like video apps available where they will utilize the full screen for 16.9. Unfortunately, YouTube as the app doesn't do that. Now, what I'm going to do here is let me go back to my Google folder and I will go to Chrome. Now I've actually got YouTube in the Chrome browser here, which is in that thin portrait position there, which isn't particularly useful. So what will happen here if I turn the phone to its side, as we will see, it's now orientated landscape. But as we can see here, it is now filling the width of the screen as well. So like I say, different apps and stuff will respond differently when you mirror them out to a TV. However, we still do get those black bars. Now, the reason for that is, is because the phone is essentially somewhere in the region of 21.9 as far as its aspect ratio is concerned. So what we're seeing here is just the center 21.9 image inside a 16.9 frame. This is actually quite normal when you screen mirroring and stuff like that. Now, if I just play this video here, hold on. Right, David Harry here. It, it's him again. Let's get past that beginning because he's super boring. Hold on. For the 12.9 inch iPad and also one for the iPad Air 4 and 5. Okay, so. So, as we can see there, it is actually playing and it's a slightly different aspect ratio from what it was playing when it was inside the app. Now, if I go full screen with the video, Let's see what happens here. Here's the stand that I was using, and I've been using this for over a year. And as far as I'm concerned, it... Okay, unfortunately, going full screen within the app, even though the app was actually using the full kind of like horizontal resolution, we're not getting it when the video goes full. I'm just showing these as examples so people can kind of get a bit of an idea as to what's going on here. However, like I've already said, there are certain apps which will actually go full screen. In fact, if you give me one moment. Okay, so what I've done here is to launch Luma Fusion on the iPhone. And as we can see, we still get those like, you know, letterbox bars top and bottom. However, if I go into full screen for the preview of the picture that's in Luma Fusion in the timeline, check this out. That actually goes totally full 16.9. So like I've just said to you, certain applications will utilize the full 16.9 as far as, say, video playback is concerned. However, the one thing that we definitely won't get in full 16.9 is the actual UI itself or the user interface to any of the apps. Now, as we can see here, I've just launched the installer for Warzone Mobile. So this phone is going to be brilliant for doing like gameplay on an external monitor. Now, whether that's you playing by touch and you want to view it on an external monitor or indeed you want to record it to a HDMI recorder or if you want to play with a controller and then also go to an external monitor the choice is yours but as we can see here it's all playing through properly of course we still get those black bars top and bottom but once again they're reflective of the aspect ratio of the phone itself now another thing here as I've said just before the latency is near enough zero however there is one massive problem with Warzone on this phone. The phone heats up stupid, and after about five to six minutes of play, it becomes unusable and unplayable. Um, but for other games, such as Call of Duty as opposed to Warzone, Call of Duty is absolutely amazing. Now, so far, I've been sitting here holding the phone in my hand, and you may not want to be doing that. So what you could do is just use a passive stand like this, which is MagSafe compatible. Now, 
Now when I say passive stand, I just mean one that doesn't charge. So obviously we can pop the phone on that MagSafe stand and then we can just put the phone wherever we want to within reach with the cable of the monitor and stuff so you don't have to keep holding it in your hand, obviously. However, if you wanted to charge the phone whilst connected to an external TV or monitor, we obviously can't do that via the USB port because the USB port right now is being used just for the video signal. So what we could do is use something like this MagSafe wireless charger by ESR, which is a three-in-one charger for like, you know, the earbuds or whatever Apple call their ear things. And also you can put the watch on this and stuff like that. However, and nonetheless, we can put the phone on and it is charging, as we could see up there, it definitely come up with the charging indicator. So in this instance, using something like this ESR wireless charging system, we can obviously be charging the phone as we're doing stuff with it to the monitor. So basically we don't lose any battery. So when it comes to the end of the day or when you finish your session on your telly or whatnot, just take your phone off, unplug it, and you've still got all your battery intact as well. Okay, so that should just about do it for this video then. And like I say, this is is the easiest way to set this up. Now, there are other ways of doing this where you can use hub systems and docks and stuff like that. I will be doing more videos about that on this channel. So if you're into that type of stuff, definitely keep an eye on the channel. And what those videos are going to do is to show you how to connect the likes of wireless keyboard, mice, microphones, headphones, you know, your video out, also charging at the same time, a whole ton of things, even including external storage devices like SSDs and flash drives and stuff like that. So there is a lot that you can actually do with the iPhone. Now, just one word of warning here. It is an iPhone and it's not an iPad. So unfortunately, what we get to see on the screen is going to be reflective of whatever the iPhone can do on its own screen. We can't really change anything on the screen as we could do, say, with an iPad Pro, for instance, or any iPad that's got Stage Manager because Stage Manager actually allows you to do a fair bit on the screen, like resize things and do like different font sizes and stuff like that. This type of mirroring is quite restricted, although, for a lot of people some of this stuff might be really useful for them so like i say coming up there will be videos showing different types of setups for like desktop setups and my favorite is gaming setups and i can absolutely guarantee you that i have got the best possible gaming setup that you can use for an iphone 15 for an external monitor with a controller and headphones and all kinds of stuff it's really cool anyways if you have found the video insightful or useful in any way please do give it a thumbs up and if you are in into this type of stuff to do with the iPhone and the iPad and the Macs and stuff like that, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel because there's going to be a lot more videos coming up now to do with all these types of things. And there will also be Amazon links in the video description below taking you to like, you know, a bunch of the stuff that I've used in this video and other suggestions as well for the likes of the iPhone, like different peripherals, cases, screen protectors and all that type of stuff. Anywho, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.